Rick Wallace here, dropping in on you. Uh, headed to this second workout. Uh, getting prepared for some time with the fam before everybody goes back to school. So much more. Uh, a couple of things I want to drop in and talk to you about uh, that um, are sitting in front of me and I, I want to address. First of all, and I will be following up with this with a series on next week, uh, the pink elephant in the room. Uh, and that is all the stuff that's going around and going on about Simone Biles and her choice to withdraw and all the backlash and how she's been handled. All of the little subtle uh, things that the media is doing to uh, portray on a ne negative light and how so many blacks have turned on her and and yet we haven't addressed the pink elephant in the room we have been dressed not only have we not addressed uh, mental health in general uh, in the black community but we haven't addressed the fact that this person grew up without her mom my mom was an addict she grew up in the foster care system she grew up with foster foster parents uh we're not going to address the fact that she was one of the young gymnasts molested by dr Kasser uh from michigan state who was the official u.s doctor for uh, uh the u.s gymnastics program out of michigan state who ended up getting hundreds of years for what had happened over decades forget that she was a part of that and she still tried to show up uh, the fact that we continue to talk about minute things, major in the minor, while f refusing to look at the things that are in depth and the things that really matter, the things that impact us, not just Simone Biles. And this isn't going to ultimately be about Simone Biles. It's going to be about the black community, mental health and how it impacts our men and our women differently and how those different impacts are impacting how we deal with one another. I'm going to talk about that, but I just had to mention that. Um, and then we're going to move on to what I'm here to talk about today. In case you haven't heard it, rapper, and I reinforce, uh, and I'm even using the word rapper loosely, in my opinion. Uh, I know this person is extremely famous, but the baby has found himself uh, in the hot seat. Not for the anti-blackness in his lyrics, not for the misogyny in his lyrics, not for the promotion of drug culture in his lyrics, not for the anti-blackness in his lyrics, uh, or, or, or the promotion of you know black men harming each other in his lyrics, but for what? Quote unquote homophobic, a homophobic statement that he made. First and foremost, you guys know how I feel about the word homophobic. Uh, being a mental health professional, being a professional that operates in mental health and understanding diagnoses for different types of phobia, which are um, classified as irrational fears. Uh, homophobia is a non-reality. Uh, disagreeing with someone's lifestyle doesn't make you a, pho a phobic of that lifestyle. Sitting up and having an opinion about someone's lifestyle does not make you uh, phobic about that lifestyle. Uh, even being negative and derogatory and disrespectful, uh, which I don't condone, doesn't make you a phobic. But it is a muscle move. It is a manipulative move. It is a way of guilting, controlling, and using social and political influence to basically make people bow down and accept and not criticize a certain lifestyle. And I will not condone or buy into it or be a part of it. Now, I said all that to say this. I'm not even to the point I'm talking about. Uh, dude is catching major heat. A lot of stuff is going on, but I'm here to talk about a specific thing that happened. Quest Love, who is a member of The Roots, one of the premier and preeminent uh, hip hop, and I mean hip hop. You can use the word MC when you talk about black thought. That's an MC. You can use that word. You can't use that word about the baby, but you can use that word about black thought. One of the best to ever do it. Uh, the Roots, 
uh, were a major part of the culture at its height. Okay, Quest Love created a list. I can't remember everybody on the list, but it was some heavy hitters from back in the day, and it's a couple of new names. And on the list was the baby of his dream list of someone of people to perform at a certain event. Um, and after the baby made this quote unquote homophobic state statement, uh, Quest Love reposted with the baby's name scratched off. And the baby responded with a negative comment, basically, I don't know who this N-word is, you know, blah, 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 and whatever. Now, first and foremost, if you really truly want to say you're a part of the hip hop community, to say you don't know who Quest Love is, is almost sacrilegious. And it says just how disconnected these young kids are to the culture that they are literally sucking dry. Uh, they're literally uh, allowing major record labels to suck, suck the lifeblood out of hip hop and they don't even have a clue of what hip hop is. We have lost the ability to hold them accountable. We don't have any way of sitting up and demanding a certain level of respect because we have lost, we sold out to commercialism. That's still not why I'm here. My thing is I'm actually taking issue with Questlove. Not because he scratched him, but because he should have scratched him a long time ago. Matter of fact, he should have never been on your list. We sit up and promote these cats for everything that's harmful while they sit up and spew everything that's harm harmful to us. We don't call them on it. We don't make them accountable for it. We don't get in their grill when they're sitting up disrespecting our women and our daughters. We don't get in their grill when they're sitting up portraying us in a negative light that isn't truly representative representative of who we are. We don't get in their grill when they're promoting drug culture. We don't get in their grill when they're doing all types of things that are directly anti-black. But the moment that they disrespect the LGBT community, we go on the offensive and we go on the attack uh, and defend them because that's the politically correct thing to do. That they've established themselves as a group to be respected. We need to be focused on what's going on in the black community. We need to sit up and have an understanding of what we will and will not allow in the black community. It's time to get these vultures out of a culture that was so powerful, so prevalent, and so effective, and has been rendered ineffective, has been raped by major record labels and clowns who are out there parading around as rappers, definitely not MCs, should never use the word MC, and there is a difference between an MC and a rapper. If you don't understand it, you don't know the culture. Not here to explain it. What I am here to tell you is that we have got to get a grip on what's going on in our community, what is being trickled down to our youth, what's being fed to them as normal, and the idea, and like I said, of all the things he should have been scratched, for all the things we should have been in his grill for, nobody said anything. He's running around. He's one of the hot things amongst our kids. I'm tired of hearing that name and then listening to the crap he spews and thinking this is the dude that everybody's big up in. I'm not saying that there haven't been problems in hip hop for years. That's not what I'm saying. There's always been an undercurrent of things that we should have worked on. But there was also a balance of, uh, of real true thought real true content real true inspiration people really driving you to think and, and and until right now it's all sensationalism it's all sexism it's all uh anti-blackism no that's not a term but i just made it up look i'm not i'm not big on cancel culture I'm not big on every time somebody do something wrong, you go out of your way to make sure that their career is over. I'm real big on knowing what I want to support and what I don't want to support. I'm real big on knowing what I want fed to my children and what I don't want. And I'm not out here saying, I'm. what I'm saying is that stuff isn't allowed to be played in the car when I'm in the car. I'm not stupid enough to know that my teenage, I'm not stupid enough to think that my teenagers when I'm not in aren't playing that. But they know if I get in the car, if I come in the room, if I'm around, it has to stop. And what that does, if nothing else, is it says there's something about this that's not right 
that I've got to sit up and sneak around and watch it. And it doesn't automatically co-sign it. It doesn't say it's okay. And the thing is, if I put them in enough situations where it's uncomfortable, they'll start to see why. And I'm always reinforcing the the, the diametric reality to what's they're, what they're hearing on that crap when they sneak off and listen to it. It's on the radio. You can't, it ain't like you gotta, you know, you gotta remember, we're not going out and buying our kids CDs anymore where we can sit and say, you know, no, you can't have that one. They're downloading, they're streaming it. It's on the radio. I mean, all they gotta do is log into Spotify or whatever else and all these other places. They can stream it all freaking day long. And, and for you people with the iPhones, if you got them an iPhone, uh, with Apple Music, they could download the crap to their phone, the whole album. There's so much you got to be aware of, and I'm staying on my kids. My kids think I get on there, yeah, I need to see your phone. Why? Because I'm responsible for the content you consume. I'm responsible for the, the uh, you know, uh, my kids for lungs. We weren't even allowed on YouTube. Why? Because there's a bunch of crap on there. Yeah, dad's on there, but you ain't going on there to watch me. You talk to me every day. You hear me talk about the stuff I'm talking about every day. I'm not brand new when I'm on my channel. I'm sitting up telling them what I tell you all the time. You don't need to go on there to watch me, so why are you on YouTube? And yeah, there's some positive things on there, but I can't watch you all the time, so I'm blocking YouTube. And, you know, and eventually I got to the point, okay, I'm going to trust you on this, but, you know, because you're going to have to eventually get out there and experience life. I'm saying all that to say we have to do a better job of holding people accountable. And what really got me is Quest Love shot at this dude, not because of all the harm he's doing in the black community, but because he said something about gangs. You know, I don't speculate on why he did it, but he did it. And I have a problem. I have a problem that you can go to bat for the LGBTQ community or whatever uh, community. But we, you haven't gone to bat with this cat over the stuff he's putting out there. Matter of fact, you had him on your your dream list of people to perform at a certain thing. And I'm assuming that's just because he's hot. So that's the whole thing. It's not just because of the sound. It's, it can't be just because of the sound. It can't be just because he's the, 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 the flavor of the day. It's got to be something he's bringing that should make him be on someone uh, someone's list. Uh, 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 of performers I mean we're accepting way too little our standards are way too low I keep talking about this I was in an interview for, with a young lady from Chicago who interviewed me today and all I can talk about is and no she actually brought, brought up the point that when there's something of substance out there it can't build a following Nobody wants anything of substance. We want the shallow stuff that sounds good, that makes us laugh, that fuels our uh, intellectual biases and keeps our minds narrow. Those are the things we go after. Anything that makes us stand up and hold ourselves to a standard, we shun it because we don't want to be accountable. We don't want the responsibility of being better. We want something, but we don't want to live for it, to fight for it, to die for it, to stand up for it. So we sit around and we move around and we play with all this bull crap that has no intrinsic value. And we're expecting our babies to grow up and be something better than we were? Are you kidding me? Look, I'm I'm sorry about the music. I even realized it was still playing. I, I had to fire it off before I turned it. I thought I had turned it down. But nevertheless, look, I, I am so fed up with it. We've got to do better. Look, I'm about to get off of here, as I always say. Show some love and support for the work we do. Uh, the way that you can support the work we do is in the description box. But we uh, definitely, we definitely, definitely, definitely have to do better. On that note, I'm out of here.